Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better ask. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on. Looking like the trap dog. Giving them all. Like a million bucks, but things in its cups. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be? But Steve Harvey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And listen to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Listening to the voice. Come on, dig me now. <laughs> One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Man, oh man, oh man. It symbolizes just one thing to me, man. It's just a constant reminder of exactly how good God has been to me over the years. And I thank him for it too, because I realize every day that I wake up that I would be nothing without him. That everything I am that's any good in me, I owe to him. Now, have I made some mistakes along the way? Yep. Mm -hmm. bunches bunches and bunches and will I continue to make mistakes along the way yep not as many hopefully as I have in the past because a lot of stuff I know better now but you're still going to make mistakes now you know hopefully I've limited the amount of intentional errors in my life I've wiped quite a few of those out but from time to time because we're human we're going to make a mistake every now and then the trick with it is y'all is not to let the devil deceive you into thinking that once you make that mistake that that's it you can't do it you've fallen off the wagon you can't reboard it that's the biggest trick that he uses he makes you think that if you keep stumbling that you can't run the race um, it kind of reminds me of a marathon runner from time to time. I watch him on TV and you'll see some people who, uh, finish the race, you know, in a, in a, in a nice, uh, pace. You see people finish the race sprinting towards the finish line. But every now and then you'll watch a marathon and you'll see a runner and the runner is in really, really bad shape. The key is they finish the race. See, you don't get disqualified in the marathon because you stumble. You don't, they don't, they don't take your opportunity to finish the race because you keep falling. That's not the key. The key is finishing. And a lot of times what what the devil does is he makes you think that because you keep stumbling, because you're swaying from side to side, that, you know, you out the race. Well, that's not the case. And see, and in this thing called life, let me help you understand something. Everybody falls. Nobody sprints to the tape in this one. Nobody just runs free and clear. There are some people running faster than you and all like this. And some people going to get to the end before you let them go ahead. And when the end come, the end come. I ain't in a rush to get to the end. 
But in this race, though, when you're stumbling and you're falling, it's a part of it. No one gets through this race without stumbling and falling, swaying from side to side. So don't let the uh, the enemy deceive you into thinking that it's over. I, I, I try to be encouraging to people because I don't want people to get stuck on this thing. You know, and my walk is very different from a lot of people's walks. And then I know a lot of people who walk in faith the way I'm walking in faith. But my, my thing in the morning is just to remind those that is not a perfect walk, man, that is not something that's set up where you're going to be skipping through life scot-free without any pitfalls. You know, I keep saying it over and over and over again. Cause like I said, when I was in DC, um, my boy Hondo said this to me and it just kind of stuck with me that the road to construct the road to success is always under construction. You have to figure and count on the setbacks and the pitfalls. But it's those people that that uh, that that uh, that fight through will be the victors in the end. You cannot give up, man. Stop going somewhere and sitting down every time something goes down. It's going to go down. It's a part of it. It's going to happen. It's going to occur. There are going to be setbacks. If you go and sit down every time there's a setback, you, you that's not how this works. It is designed that way. If success were easy, everybody would be successful. But success is just reserved for those who are willing to fight through, who refuse to settle for mediocrity, who wants something more. Now, don't get me wrong. Success is defined by each individual. So what I may consider to be successful, you may not consider that. You know, what Bill Gates considers successful, I might not consider. What what Michael Jordan considers successful, I might not consider. What you consider successful, your boss might not consider. You have to define what that is for yourself. It may not be monetary at all. You know, your level of success could be tied up in community service. It could be tied up in family. It could be tied up in the church. Your level of success could be tied up in the boys clubs. It could be any number of things. Whatever your level of success is, you have to determine what that is. You And the best way to determine that is to get in touch with your maker who created you to find out what your mission and your purpose is so he can put you on track. I just had a, this conversation with my son and we were talking about getting on the path that God has set up for you. So many times we find ourselves fighting through life because of so much uncertainty, because we have no idea where we're headed. It's like uh, one of my um, sayings that I have at my mentoring camp for boys is, is that a boy without a male role model is like an explorer without a map. See, if you don't have a map, laid out in front of you of where you're going. When you wake up every day, that pretty much explains the feeling of confusion, the lackadaisical attitude, the, the lack of purpose, the not understanding your mission, because you don't have not gotten in touch with your creator to find out exactly what your path in life is. What are you supposed to be doing? The moment you can identify that is the moment that you get started waking up with purpose, with the sense of direction, when you kill the sense of, I don't know what's next or what to do. Now, there's going to be some confusing moments no matter what happens. There's going to be some uncertainty, but at least you'll know where you're going. So if you're tired of waking up feeling lost, abandoned, confused, don't know what to do, don't know what you're supposed to be doing, refer back to your maker. Because when he created you, he had a plan for you. When he created you, he had a path for you. Now, we've made some decisions to get off of both of those, the mission and the path, but God can get you right back on track. Do that today. Ask him what you're supposed to be doing. And listen, God has all the answers if you form the relationship, okay? 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Another day, another opportunity. This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You are with some of our favorite people. You are our dedicated listening audience. Even if you ain't dedicated, I'm going to call you that. I don't give a damn if you listen every now and then. Long as we can count you, you good with us. I know you ain't here every morning. Some of you are. Hell, I don't want to be here every morning. Sometimes I want to wake up and just, you know, go fishing or something. Yeah. But I have an obligation. My team has an obligation to wake the world up and put you in a good frame of mind so you can go out here and deal with this world you in today. That's how we do it on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ain't nobody bad like we. You can believe that. It's other radio shows, but nothing. Nothing can pass. Nothing compares to you. Nothing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley Strawberry, call it for real. The mouth of the South Mississippi money, who is Monica, who is a radio and TV producer today, we discovered. Ladies and gentlemen, Junior Boy, better known as Kill Space. And the legend that if you, that is nephew Tommy, who's had several ailments this year, but God is in the blessing business and has overcome them all. He's doing shoulder exercises right now with a five-pound dumbbell. Eight. Eight. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Steve Harvey Morning Show Jr. Yes, sir. What's going on? Let me tell you something, Mark. I think the euphoria of this house didn't wore off already. Yeah. What? You haven't even moved just in. Got to. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. It, it didn't move you off. You just got I'm, it. It's a brand I, new house. Yeah, I'm in trouble, though. That's all. I know. What? I didn't know. Because, uh, you know, when you hear your name early in the morning, it ain't never good. I, I know that. She yelling across the house early in the morning, it ain't never good. All because are we moving. Because I packed up all the coffee in here. I, I didn't know. we. I thought we was leaving. <laughs> Oh, so yes, now yeah. I'm in trouble because ain't no coffee maker in here, ain't no coffee in here, ain't no pots in here, ain't nothing. All this stuff here. Wait, I can't cook. She made rice and gravy on the microwave yesterday. Very talented, <laughs> though, I must tell you. Very talented. I don't know how she did it, but she made rice and gravy in the microwave yesterday. But I, I just know that right now she's not really happy with me because I'm moving. I thought that was the goal. We can't keep it here. We have to move it. So I'm in okay. trouble for that. I can't understand. I thought the house would be enough to give me at least two months. At least give me two months of happening. No, I'm back in trouble again. Euphoria gone. That's what's wrong, huh? What, what is the problem, huh? That we doing what they ask us to do, and we still get in trouble? Yeah, because you could never do enough. That's well, not true. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is, Carla, because I'm, I'm well, telling you Carla, this morning. It is true. Sorry. No, it's not. We're not Y'all don't know it, but it is true. Huh? Uh, We're not insatiable. Uh, we don't even know what that means. That. But <laughs> damn that. I, yeah, I she definitely said, disagree with that. <laughs> no, because yeah. she held out this no. morning. She held out this morning. Where are the towels? <laughs> yes, that's right. It ain't ever enough, Junior. But no, we're always appreciative of what you yes. do. We're just looking. But but it ain't enough, though. We got no, the appreciation. Enough. We're not saying you, Tommy. Tommy, it tell you. You do know you're going to get thing. cussed out in this new house, though. You do know that. You're going to get cussed <laughs> out in this new in house. In the old one. <laughs> Yeah, oh, right after you move in. <laughs> and coming we get a Mother's 30... Day gift together, too. <laughs> oh, yes, coming up at 32 minutes after the hour. it ain't the house. We'll hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew and run that prank back. What you got for us today, Neff? <laughs> well, you know what, Shirley, you always got to celebrate people's birthdays. You know, you yeah. want to celebrate. You want to show uh, some love and some mm -hmm. care that you care about them on this great, 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 great day that they're celebrating. Right. So, um, you know, uh, we do it all the time here on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We celebrate each other's birthday. We make sure we say happy birthday and show love. We do that here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, I wanted to reach out and say, um, you know, your wife's birthday. Your wife's birthday. Your wife's birthday? Not mine. Mm -mm, not mine. Mm -mm. My, my, my wife ain't any pranks. Let's get that, let's get that straight. <laughs> now that right there is where I draw the line. So you're oh. celebrating someone else's wife. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like and I want to make friend. sure that I want to make sure that he's not getting her what I'm getting her. Oh. You know what I mean? Oh. 
Oh, you know what I'm saying? Right. Couldn't have you that. Know, no, we yeah. wouldn't want that. What's her size is, you know, I want to get her something sexy. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but I don't want us to get the same thing. And now she's sitting over there with two of them. Now you got the same Victoria's Secret. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that don't make no sense to me. You understand? So, so your wife's birthday. Cat dog, if you would. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Darren. Yeah, what's up? Hey there, man. What's going on, bro? This uh, uh, my name is Chris, man. I work with um, I work with your wife, Sharon. I think I think I may have seen you at one of the um, one of the gatherings before, man. Like a, a happy hour we had after work or something. I, I don't know if you remember me or not. No, I don't remember you. Okay, 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 cool. Hey, listen, man. I know Sharon's birthday is coming up, so I wanted to, uh, if you didn't mind, I, I hope you don't mind me calling. I wanted to reach out and see if you were uh. You know what you were getting her for a birthday. I we I wanted to make sure you know we were gonna pitch in and get her something at the job. We want to make sure you know we didn't get you know you know what you may be uh, gonna get her. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like something like a grab bag or some like that. Uh no, I wasn't gonna hit her with no grab bag. I was just you know like I said, we was gonna get some. We know we haven't really put our put our uh, all the thoughts to it of what we was going to get yet. But I want, I personally want to see what you was getting. That way we don't, uh, you know, do Okay. Well, she likes money, man. You can, you know, uh, give her some, give her some cash or, you know, Starbucks card or, uh, something from McDonald's, something, you know, it, it don't have to be too big. She, she don't, uh, you don't have to, you know, she, she's not that materialistic. Okay. Okay. Well, let, 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 let me, let me, let me ask you this though, D. Uh, do you uh know what her size is? Do I know what her size is? Yeah, like clothing. You know, do you know what size she wear? Uh, yeah, I know what size. She's my she's my wife, man. What, 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 I think this is kind of like get, I'm getting a little bit uncomfortable with this, man. What? what, what where, do you do you think? Uh, you know, I don't mean make you uncomfortable, bro. Let me ask you this here: Do you do you think she she like uh do she like stuff from Victoria's Secret? Whoa. Hold up, man! Stop right there. What the f are you talking about? What? No, I, I like I say, I, I want to get. What? What? A... What's your? Hey, what's your name again, man? My name Chris. Like like I said earlier, my name Chris. Uh, how long? How long you been with the company? Uh, I, I only been there six months. You know, but like I said, I think I saw you at, at one of the happy hours. I, I saw. Maybe you just don't remember who I am, though. No, 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 man. But you way out of line talking this shit about a size and. I, I'm not comfortable with this at all, man. You know. Okay, okay. Right. You right. way out. You way out of line. Right, but but, but see, what, what you didn't answer my question was was do you think she liked Victoria's Secret? That's I what I'm ain't asking. gonna answer your <laughs> question. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay, okay. What's 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 what with the language, brother? What's what's wrong? We brothers, you know. I, we ain't we ain't we ain't no <laughs> brother. You a <laughs> fool. Okay, what do you so, get off asking me? About my wife's clothes and oh, oh, okay, uh, uh, okay, all right. I okay, you what? Talk with okay, what? All I'm, okay, what? Uh, all I'm saying is, 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 do you think she gonna like the Victoria's Secret? I'm I don't gonna... give a. <laughs> hey man, shut the <laughs> up with that. <laughs> do you know how long we've been together? I've known this woman since high school. Don't come to me with that. <laughs> okay, so. So I was just trying to get a. Uh, what 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 time do you guys get off? I'm coming down. Uh, right I, right I leave now. A, I leave I leave the office at five thirty, but I was gonna leave early. I'll be right. I, hey, we can talk about this face to face. Hey hey, listen. I'm trying to get. Listen what? I ain't, I ain't gotta listen to. This I'm trying to get Sharon a panty and bra set, man. Okay. Hey, you ain't buying my wife, and she wouldn't even accept it anyway. Okay. Hey so, man, so, how 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 you get this number? How you get this number? <laughs> I know she didn't give you this. <laughs> Let me tell you how, there. I got it from your wife Sharon because guess who I am? I am nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Sharon got me the prank phone call. You. <laughs> what? <laughs> that there, there. This Tommy some... man. This is nephew Tommy, brother. Man, this is some bullshit. <laughs> this, this is some real. This is some straight up bullshit. Hey, man, you ain't right, man. <laughs> you know, you need to stop with people. You know, because you might get, you might, somebody might be waiting for you after work one day, man. That shit 
totally wrong. You ever heard of karma? <laughs> I heard of Somebody going to play a prank on your ass one day. <laughs> your uncle is right. Somebody's going to whoop your ass. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, all right, Darren. Before I get my ass whooped, will you t please tell the people, what is the baddest radio show in the land? The f Steve Harvey show. <laughs> now, you see how stupid that is on Friday. Can you imagine how ignorant it's going to be tomorrow night at the Keswick <laughs> Theater, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania? It sounds like Philly to me. Yes, it does. Keswick Theater, me and Lou Nell, uh, to Ray McLaren. Oh my God! Did I not tell y'all that? Okay. Hey, t t t t Shirley, take us out because I'm, I'm, I'm about to, <laughs> oh, I'm about to explode up in here. I'm telling you, tomorrow is <laughs> coming the night. up next. <laughs> it is Ask the CEO with our Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, producer Lee Daniels thinks that Don Lemon and Tucker Carlson would smash the ratings if they teamed up. Uh, would Kim Kardashian, yeah, leave re reality TV mm. to be a lawyer full time? Mm -hmm. She might just do that. And LSU basketball champion Angel Reese says that Drake and Future slid into her DMs. We'll talk about all of these stories at the oh, top of the hour, yeah. But right oh, now, man. it is time to ask the CLO. This runs from Deidre in Fort Myers. Deidre writes, my husband raised his ex-wife's child as his own. He and I are married now, and my husband still spends time with the boy who's eight years old. My husband asked if the boy can spend the summer with us. Is it wrong for me to say no to this? See, that's a touchy one. Yes, it is. Been, because been you on. want to have complete, complete separation from his past. But the child knows him as his dad. That's it. And to remove the boy's male role model from his life so you can be comfortable. See, you don't want the reminder that this is him and his ex's baby mm -hmm. in, in your house. And I'm not even sure. I think I heard you right. It's not his biological son. Right. Right. So Right, right. It's not. It's not. No, it's his it's ex wife's ex's son. It's the ex's son. Yeah. So. But he raised him as his own. Yeah. yeah. I understand your uh, concern about that. Your hesitation. I do. It's very real. But at the same time, if you could just consider for a moment the welfare of a child who has only known this man as a father figure and to remove that from him that's mm. concerning man. it's yeah. something bigger than her mm -hmm. uh, you know but lady if you want it to just be about you then mm. of course you're absolutely correct <laughs> but if you would consider the plight you know it's uh, you know i don't think that men get enough credit oftentimes especially for men who step up and take care of kids that aren't their own that's a special dude man because yeah. he's taking the responsibility over for somebody who done walked away from him mm. and, and that's a special dude and now you're telling him not to do that ah. Yeah, you're right, Steve. All right, moving on to Frank in Atlanta. I was dealing with a wild and crazy woman, and the sex was top shelf, but she liked to bite and pinch, and she tried to smother me with a pillow once. I had to leave her alone before she killed me, but I can't get her off my mind. Should I talk to her about being less aggressive in bed or leave her alone for good? Mm. You need to leave her alone, though. Really Why? Why? But it's good, it's, though, Steve. Yeah. That was good, though. Top shelf. Yeah, she going to kill him, though. She going to kill him. That's what yeah. he's afraid Eventually, of. Eventually. That's what, that's what he's yeah. afraid of, yeah. yeah. Can he Can he put on one of them oxygen masks and go in there with that? I mean, I mean something. Nah. So he can breathe. You got to do all that. I show him suggest, dog, you just go get you a girl that do regular stuff and go and bat down. You know, make yeah. that work for you. All that excitement coming at a price for you. She didn't try to kill you. She done bit you. <laughs> oh, you gonna mess you around and get stabbed? That's what I see that coming. You gonna get stabbed once they pinching and scratching and biting and smothering. Ain't nothing left but gunshots and stabbing. Weapons? Yeah, yeah. yeah you gonna be in there playing Russian roulette with them. <laughs>
can't get Your it off his mind. I know, yeah, I know. So you ain't been bit before. That's what you're saying. You ain't, you ain't didn't like it. <laughs> no, you ain't. I don't been like bit. biting, Tommy. I don't like or, biting. Or smothered with a pillow or pinch. No, no, no you're not smothering me without getting knocked in the flow. <laughs> you're not smothering me. My reaction to smothering is not good. <laughs> Johnny Waller choked me one time in the ninth grade. That's all oh, I needed Lord. right there. After that, I knew that wasn't going to be gratifying That's for me funny. ever again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no all right, moving on to Penny in Harlem. Penny says, my boyfriend tells his friends too much of our personal business. We did some role playing in bed for the first time, and I overheard him telling his friend about it. How could he do that? Does it mean he doesn't take our relationship seriously? Yeah, he's very immature. Most men, men that's got somebody they care about, we're not discussing our bedroom life with our boys. We're not doing that. Because we got too much respect for her. She off limits. Yo, lady. Uh, yeah. 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 Ah. yeah, you just in here tricking. You know, oh, that's mm -hmm. up for discussion. So she thinks it's something and <laughs> it's, you just it's something entirely different. <laughs> From his perspective. Well, what's their relationship, though, Shirley? She, oh, he, she said he's her boyfriend. Well, that's all you is. He don't care about you if he talk about you as a brother. Like, yeah. I don't, that's not a good sign. Not at and all. And you no. hearing that from men. Say yeah. That. Yeah. Not that ain't all. a good sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, receive Because I don't that. talk about nobody I care about. You're not getting that conversation. Boy, she put a leg up on that ceiling fan. Let me tell you, boy. Let me tell you how yeah. she did it. Yeah. Boy, y'all yeah. watching the game? <laughs> yeah. How long are her legs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. No. Well, you know, she wasn't in the bed. She was hanging from it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well. All right. So there you have it, Penny and Harlem. Uh, That's how they do it at home. Last Sorry. one. Harlem Shake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Last one, Steve. This is from Willette in Charlotte, okay? Willette said, I had a threesome with my husband, and he is still sleeping with the woman. I feel guilty for inviting her into my marriage, so I never questioned him about the affair. I want my husband back all to myself. How do I reverse what I've done? Whoa. Oh. Yeah, you can't. You can't. He, he good. You said, what? cool, let's do it. He said, yeah, she Thank invited you. it. She, yeah, you, you, yeah, you gave the hall pass. Right, she did. Now, you can ask for the pass back. But not he's happening. still going to be in the hall, though. Yeah, not happening. Yeah, he's, you're right. He's still yeah. going to be I in like the hall. I'll I like throw the it. hall yeah. pass back in the classroom. But I'm going to stay out here in this hall, though. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because nothing's yeah, going he over there. So he, it's going good over there, too. Yeah. How, how can she get her husband back all to herself? That's what she wants. No, mm -hmm. I just told Is you that's not going to happen. No, he mm -hmm. gone. He in the he, hall. Yeah, he gone. There's nothing. He gone. You, hey. you gave permission? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he, he yeah. not getting detention. No. But she changed. She changed because he's still sleeping with her. Yeah, so. but see, you can't, you can't tell a man it's okay to sleep around, and then now he didn't got used to it. Now you gonna tell him y'all don't want you sleeping around no more. Yeah, so then he's out. thinking in himself. So not nah, you just want me back over here just with you. Yeah, yourself. You just doing regular stuff. That's <laughs> yeah. what we doing. Just regular with you. <laughs> right. Wait, what? Steve? She's so selfish. Just with you. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's it from now on. Uh, you know what? He ain't not gonna work. To That's not gonna work. He ain't got to lie about where he at. No. Uh -uh. He ain't got to lie. Their, their marriage is open. Yeah. <laughs> she opened it up. All right. Yeah. Thank you, CLO. Moving on now to the top of the hour and entertainment news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so this week started out with drama after two journalists from competing organizations left their long-standing jobs on Monday. Don Lemon was reportedly terminated from his position at CNN, and Fox News announced that Tucker Carlson won't be returning to that network. The news sent shockwaves through social media, and director Lee Daniels had an idea. He was one of many uh, that shared his thoughts about Lemon and Carlson. Daniels... 
did an Instagram live video encouraging Lemon and Carlson to join forces. Daniel said, Don Lemon, Tucker Carlson, if I were a smart executive, I'd put them both on the same TV show. How bananas would the ratings be? I think it could possibly unite the country. Now that's from Lee Daniels. What do you think, Steve? That. Yeah, they're oh, it ain't going to unite the country. Well, I mean, now, because Lee, they're so now, opposed. Lee, now, Mr. Daniels, you do great movies. Excellent. Your work is epic. Mm-hmm. Proud of you, though. Now, I'll tell you what. what I'll produce what? the show with you. Because <laughs> it'll be a hell of a hit. How is this about you? Matter of fact, I'm finna text Don right now. <laughs> tell him you got a deal for him. <laughs> Boy, please. And Mr. Daniels, since we talking about movies... I'm here if you need me. And how is this about you? I'm t- I, this is a great time to tell Mr. Daniels I'd like to work. I'm just saying. <laughs> you, the question is, would Don Lemon and Tucker Carlson be good on TV together? Oh, See, that's cool. it would be. It would that's be tough. the question, yeah. It would be tough, man, mm-hmm. but it would be must-see TV. Because yeah, that's, that's never been done saying. before. You know, uh, okay, look, like like CNN does it. CNN does it. They'll have a Republican right wing like Scott on every now and then mm-hmm. to add the right perspective. But never have you had two stars sit there and debate certain subjects and topics. Mm-hmm. And I think it will be interesting. But there was two egos in the same room. It's going to be rough. Yeah. But it's it's like you rough. said, my CTV, mm-hmm. but, but for the right check. You better deal with it. (laughs) So there you go. All right. uh, In an interview at Time 100 Summit earlier this week, Kim Kardashian talked about her criminal justice reform efforts and uh, said she would consider giving up reality TV to be an attorney full time. Kim's passion for law and justice has been well documented over the past several years. Just last week, Kim, her sister Chloe, and rapper Lil Baby visited a California state prison to learn about inmates' experiences on the inside. When asked if she would ever leave reality television to focus solely on being a lawyer, Kim said, quote, I would be just as happy being an attorney full-time and doing that. The journey just really opened up my eyes to so much. It gets overwhelming because there's so much to be done. I would totally spend more time doing that. Cameras or no cameras. So there you You know, I mean, I think everybody has to get to a point in their life where you discover your purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when life becomes very fulfilling. When you find the reason why. The two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you discover why. Mm -hmm. Those two days are absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. The sad part of it is a lot of people go through life never really attaching themselves to a purpose. And Kim Kardashian could very well find that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if, if you're thinking, if anybody is thinking out there, there's got to be more to life than this, that's because it is. And the moment you stop thinking there's got to be more to life than this, you in some trouble because the Bible clearly says a man without a dream or a vision shall perish. It does not say a man without an education will perish. It says when you stop dreaming and having visions, you will die Mm. because there is nothing to shoot for. And once you lose the aiming ability, you've lost one of the major uh, components to waking up every day. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thank God for a a, a great deal. My ability to have dreams and visions. And everybody has them. Everybody on this show has them. Everybody listening has them. You just can't let the devil rob you of that. Because the the devil's main goal in life is to rob you of your destiny. That's, he wants that more than anything. He don't care if you get a big house. He don't care if you make a lot of money. He just wants to rob you of your destiny. Ooh, what on. God has put you on this world to do. And if he can make you think there's nothing for you to do, if he can make you think you've already arrived, if he can get you to thinking this is it, then Lord have mercy, he wins the battle. Fight people fight. I'm sorry, you didn't ask me all that. No, but that was good, though. That was-
People Excellent. need to hear that. That's that's greatness. All right. Moving on to uh, Angel Reese. You know, her exposure has increased drastically since she led the LSU Tigers women's basketball team to the 2023 NCAA National Championship earlier this month. She's so popular now that during a recent radio interview, she revealed that rappers Drake and Future were among the many celebrities that have slid into her DMs. Reese made sure she explained the nature of their conversations, though. Angel said uh, they just congratulated her. It was just congratulations, okay? That's all it was before you start thinking other Mm. things. (laughs) Just congratulations. And what have we learned from this, fellas? What? Stay out them young girls, DM. Because they, <laughs> they going to tell it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Stay out. But imagine that, Drake. You you look at your, your, your DMs and Drake is in there. Wow. I don't even know how to look at my DMs. I don't know where the DM, DM at, though. I don't know how where to get in there. No. <laughs> you don't? I don't know where. Uh-uh. Old. <laughs> Yeah. All right, coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, Steve has a special announcement. Hmm, wonder what that could be. We'll find out right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, hey, so you're... Shirley, I have an announcement to make. Oh, okay. Well, Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> this is major news, everybody. I need your undivided attention. You know, for the first time in all of American broadcast history, this is the first time you all... Women of color are going to be recognized on a national platform for all of their hard work and contributions to the radio industry. Now, as a part of the Black Women in Radio's Oral History Project, they have selected 39 African-American female radio veterans from all over the country who will be celebrated in Washington, D.C. at the Library of Congress this afternoon. Folks... That would include our very own Miss Shirley Strawberry and Carla Pharrell. Yeah. Come on, yeah. look at him. Yeah. Won't he do it? Yeah. Yes, he will. Junior, hit it. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> they will be uh, two of the 39 African-American uh, female radio veterans. They are part of the Black Women in Radio's inaugural 30th and for the first time in history, have been invited to attend the Radio Preservation Task Force Conference in our nation's capital. So they will be going up there to represent black women in radio, to represent Uh the Steve Harvey Morning Show, to hold it down for all of our markets, all of our listeners, Two. We got two. Ain't nobody else got two. Yeah. Yeah. We got yeah. two of the veterans of radio representing women of color. We want to congratulate Shirley and Carla. They're yeah. going to also get a tour of the White House mm-hmm. and will be greeted by the White House press secretary, Corrine Jean-Pierre. Yes. Very good, oh, no. Steve. Yes. Very oh, good. Oh, her name could be Karen. It's not. <laughs> She's a sister. Yeah. Jean Pierre. <laughs> or it could be Karine <laughs> Jean Pierre. Whoever that is, thank you for recognizing our sisters. But congratulations to our very own Shirley Strawberry and Carla Pharrell because we are pretty sure are the only ones that's sending two bad, bad women on up there to D.C. You better show out. Thank you, yeah. Steve. Yeah. I'm going to have Ellie dress y'all. Oh, we're going to be fly, Shirley. Ooh. Yes. I ought to have y'all up there and just straight Versace. <laughs> Give it to her. I love Thank it. you, uh, Steve. Congratulations, Carla. And to all the other women, this is quite an honor. We we appreciate yes. this very much. Yep. Yes. Thank Coming you. Congratulations, up. Shirley. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Carla. All right, coming up, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I think Roscoe Wallace is stopping by right after this. Is this Friday? Roscoe? Yeah, he'll be here. Yeah. Yeah. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Yes. You see who's here and ready to go. <laughs> Welcome back, <laughs> Roscoe Wallace. Stay yes. ready, baby. Ain't no, hey, I'm, I'm already set. All of you. <laughs> Every time you were going to call me, I'm already here. <laughs> I see. I ain't Tell her what you want to get going on. 
I ain't ever been late for nothing. I'm on uh, time. Uh, all right, Roscoe. You ready? What, what, Let's what, get what, to what, it. What you want? What you want? I want a little Bobby Womack. Ooh. If you think oh. you're lonely now. If you think you're lonely now. <laughs> you better now up in here. Wait until tonight, girl. If you think you're lonely, oh, lonely, lonely, lonely. <laughs> Wait until tonight, girl. Harry Hippie. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, you, 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 well, you don't know who you met with. All right, yeah, Bobby Womack, yeah. definitely. I love Bobby it, Roscoe. Womack. Yeah. Let's go up to Chicago. Chicago. The Shylights. It was a cold this <laughs> day <laughs> of my life. But I want to break it down like this. Yes. I see her. Face yeah, everywhere I, I go, on the street, and even at the picture of her show. Have you seen her? Oh, you better oh, sing, Rock. Tell me, have you seen her? <laughs> I hear her voice preaching <laughs> out to me. So Only she can set me free. Have you seen mm -hmm. her? <clears throat> Tell me, have you seen her? <laughs> Why, oh, why did you have to leave me and go away? Oh, yeah, whoa, I've been you. You better say. To having someone to lean on, and I'm lost. What? Baby, I'm lost. Whoa, oh, girl. Oh. <laughs> I'd be what? in what? trouble if you left me now. I'm you combined up with me. Yeah. I don't know where to look for love. And I don't, I don't know how, how, how. Thank you, baby. Lord, that, that was a remix. I, you know, I mix it. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. It was nice. Yeah, yeah, nice. You, you see how I went from song to song? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I loved it. I loved yeah, it. Girl, girl that's kill. That's kill. Whoa, whoa. What you got in there? What? The dramatics. What you see? I want to go outside. <laughs> that one, that one, that one. Whatever. He going to that one every time. In the rain. Sound crazy, uh -huh. but I wanna go outside. <laughs> Thanks, Squirrel. I wanna go outside. <laughs> Not Squirrel. <laughs> Sing it all the time. In the rain. <laughs> Roscoe. Oh, I could do so many. I could do the. What you see? What you is see? What you get? <laughs> what you get? <laughs> <laughs> I said, what you see is what you get now, baby. And real is the best, is the best thing yet. The best thing yet. Oh! <laughs> like a wheel whirling round and round, you know roping down a hill. <laughs> Spinning on the ground, your kisses make me dizzy. In the head, I don't even know this. Now I'm falling. This is his favorite dramatic song. Yeah, falling. Oh, here I go. Down and down I go. But look well, at Junior. I lost. can't help myself. <laughs> One more time. Coming up next. Yeah, Roscoe, you Frank blew Bonk my mind. Sing us out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, I just met my play sister-in-law. Hmm. We'll get into that in just a few because right now it is time for the nephew and today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? 
this right here. Don't you hate child support? Don't <laughs> you hate? Oh man! Child but why? So what wrong. I do? What? 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 Let's go, cat. Hello. Hello. I am trying to reach a Melvin Colbert, please. Yeah, this is Melvin. Uh, Mr. Melvin, how are you? My name is uh, Tim Howler. I'm with the um, Child Support Services, and I wanted to give you a call. Going through the records that we have, I wanted to follow up on some things. We're noticing here that your son, Melvin Jr., is going to be turning uh, 18 here pretty soon. But looking at our records, it indicates that you were doing pretty well with child support for 17, maybe, well, 16, 16 years. Uh, it just seems like well, here within the last year you seem to have fallen off. Seems like we haven't gotten a payment from you within the last year. I'm looking. I'm dating it back now. It looks like. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Now you said uh, for 16 years, my son will be 18 in three months. Right. I know. So, that's what we're saying. It seems like he's approaching 18, sir. But it, within the last 12 months, 12, 13 months, sir, we haven't really, we haven't really gotten a payment here from you as far as child support is concerned. Wait. Now, what you mean you ain't got no payment? They take it out of my check. They take money out of my check every week, every paycheck. Twice, and that's twice a month. They take money out of my check, and they been taking money out of my check. Uh, so sir, you need wait a minute. You need to look in that computer again. Look, look in there again. Sir, I'm, I'm, um, I've gone through the records over and over. I, I actually thoroughly check before I give people a phone call. I'm 99.9% sure this is dated back 13 months here. You've been paying right at $750 a month. Am I right? Yes, that's right. And they break it up over over a four-week period, and, and you get paid weekly, so they've been taking they it out. Three hundred Every two weeks, they've been taking $375 out of my check. Right. So, uh, no, something wrong. Uh-uh, no, they've been taking it. I know they've been taking it out of my check. Well, sir, I, I, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but what happens when, when situations get to this point, this is what takes place. Uh, even though the child is turning 18, what they're going to do, sir, is now extend child support until the child reaches 21, which is another three years now. Uh, oh, no, no, oh, hell no. Hell the, no, no. They've been taking $375 on my check twice a month. So I no, no, ain't no extending nothing. My court order say when my son turned 18 in three months, three months from tomorrow, that damn child support going to get cut off. Ain't no expenses in no 21. Sir, sir. No, no, sir. I take care of my son. No, 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 you listen to me. Some, y'all y'all got me f***ed up. I take care of my son, and they take it out of my check. Sir, I wait a minute, sir. What I'm saying is it's, it's not in the computer. We don't have any listings of it. It hasn't been done within the last 13 months. That's when, when it comes to a situation like this, we extend it to nah, three, to, no, to, to no, the child no, is 20. No, you, to nah, three, to, no, to, to no, the child no, is 20. No, you, no, you ain't extending nothing on, on me. 18, y'all ain't got your, uh, but baby, they, they talking about I ain't paid. I got the check stubs where they been taken out of my check. Now, how come y'all don't have the records of this? Sir, do you have to? Huh? Where are my check stubs? Where the check stubs at? Huh? Huh? Yeah, I got a box where I keep the check stubs at. Do you have every you check stub? You damn right I got every check stub. And I got the other damn receipts, everything I bought for them. Well, excuse me, I don't mean talking about my son like that, but, 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 but where, where, where is your supervisor at? I'm the, I'm the actual manager here. I'm the one that makes the phone call, sir. We've gone through these records over and over, trying to make sure that we were definitely clear on it before we give a, a um, a, a personal call about a situation like this. I, oh, I, no, yeah, that's bullshit, man. That's, but no, no, you, no, that's, that's some bullshit. Sir, I said, sir, I don't want to be a bearer of bad news. Now, you, but, without, but don't call me with this. You don't want me to be, to be no bearer. Don't sir, call me with this you will be bullshit. paying this until the child is 21. Oh, that's bullshit. I bet you, you wait till my son turns 18. I bet you one thing. Y'all ain't taking shit out of my check no 21 my ass. Sir, let me, t let, sir, what I'm not going to do is have you, I'm not going to go back and forth with you, Okay. Now, you're going to pay 21 until he's 21, or you're going to jail. Well, mister, let me tell you one thing. Now, I know what the hell they've been taking out of my check twice a month. Do you hear me? I know what they've been taking out, because I know what I've been bringing home. Well, sir, uh, is there a possibility? Yeah, is that right? And look, here, let me tell you this here. I, be, I, I tell you what, when my son get 18, ain't no more coming out of my check. Y'all can pay the 
21 if you want to. Y'all can care. I've been taking care of it. Y'all can pay that when he's 21. That hell no. Are you having problems giving money to your son to support him, sir? What the f*** you talking about? I ain't y'all got no problem taking this out of my dick. I take care of my son. Good. I take care of him good. Get him a haircut every week. Buying them damn tennis shoes. Still get it. I ain't no problem paying with my son. I take care of my son. I take care of what's mine. And that's what I've been doing. For the past damn near 18 years, come three months from tomorrow. That's what I've been doing. So I tell you what, I'm going to still take care of my damn son afterwards. But it ain't coming out of my check to y'all. I'm going to take care of my own because I don't need y'all in my. I need a white folks in my. To make me take care of my damn son. So when 18 come, I bet you one thing in three months on that four month, nothing better not come out of my check. I Sir. bet you that. We're gonna. You, you, it's gonna go until the child is 21. Oh, don't tell me calm down now. These mama get these straight. Call me with this. And we're gonna to get you straight. We're gonna get you straight. You're gonna pay until he's 21 because you were negligent for the last 13 months. You were. What the f up? Who the f you think you talking to? You the son of a f you? What's your f name? No, baby, this f I'm telling me. You lost your. F Mind. My name is Tim Phillips, and I'm with the Child Support Services. You have been negligent for 13 months, and you're going to pay. You're going to pay until... I'm doing right, baby. This <laughs> calling at me on my phone talking about I ain't got damn paper. Now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you one thing. Come three months, I'm going to pay it. I'm going to pay it for three months. But after three months over with, I ain't giving y'all or his mama another thing. But I give it to my son. But that bird is still there. It ain't getting another penny out of me. So now, not, not a dime. And you, you better say it. Who is who? Who is that back there? That's my gal. But, 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 but you heard what I said, right? I, yeah. so I, I'm, I'm telling you what I said. Oh, huh? You, so you got that? So you go and tell her that. You go and tell whoever the attorney general is over the U.S. You tell his ass that. I'm listening. You better not come out my check. I'm looking for your. You so know what the I've been doing. So you know what? You can kiss my black come three months. And I tell you. Well, let me say something in your face. Is you listening? What the you got to say, man? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy Stan. Listen. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Melvin, you all right, man? I will load my gun up. <laughs> Who the put you up to this, man? Your boy Stan. I guess he Stan. worked. Do Stan work with you? Yeah, that worked for me. <laughs> Forklift driving son of a I tell you what, though. <laughs> I'm gonna take the brakes off that <laughs> in the morning. That he gonna run into some. <laughs> I bet you that. Okay. I bet you that. Man, y'all cold in the man. Let me ask you something, Mr. Mel. What is what, the man? baddest radio show in the world? <laughs> man, y'all some crazy <laughs> man. The Steve Harvey Morning Show. That's the baddest. Man, y'all. Cold, man. Y'all cold, man. <laughs> take care of my son now. I'm going to take care of my son. <laughs> All right. Thank you, nephew. We needed that. Coming up next, yes. Strawberry Letter Subject. I just met my play sister-in-law. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. You never know. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry Letter. Thank you, Tommy. Subject... I just met my play sister-in-law. 
Hmm, okay. Dear Stephen Shirley, I met my husband online and we dated briefly before we got married. We figured out that we knew a lot of the same people and all my friends that knew him vouched for him and said he's a great man. His mother always acted strangely, but he said that's just how she is, and she would come around and be sweet eventually. A couple of weeks after our wedding, I asked his mother to meet for lunch, and she asked if she could bring her play daughter. I wanted to meet anyone close to my husband, so I was excited. That lunch date with his mom has sent my marriage into a downward spiral. The play daughter knew everything about my husband, even more than his mom. She said they've been the best of friends, but never romantically involved. She said they've sat up many nights crying together over bad relationships. I have never seen my husband cry. She told us that my husband almost died after a bot botched liposuction and his mom didn't know he had surgery. She thought he lost weight naturally. I asked her why she didn't come to the wedding if they were so close, and she said she wasn't invited. My mother-in-law said she insisted that she come, but the play daughter said she felt like my husband was moving shady since he met me. Now, if this doesn't sound like a whole side piece relationship with my husband, then what is it? Why is his mother not seeing this? My husband swears he's never been intimate with his play sister, but couldn't explain why he has never introduced me to her and none of his friends know of her. If I ask this play sister more questions, will I look insecure and should I keep my head high as the wifey or should I do more research on her? Uh, yes, you should keep your head high as the wifey and you don't need any more research. I mean, how much research do you need? The research you want to know uh, that you want to do now, that should have been done before the marriage. OK, that should have been done then. Anyway, you pretty much laid it all out. The clues are there with the first one being her saying your husband moving shady since he met you. And what does that mean? What does moving shady mean? Does it mean he didn't invite her to the wedding because he didn't want any drama or or he didn't in introduce her to any of his friends because he didn't want any drama or didn't want them to know about her? What did that mean? I mean, there is a reason for him not telling. Could be a side piece situation, like you said, but his mom sure knows uh, a lot about her and she knows her well enough to invite her to lunch with you guys. So, so this woman has definitely been around for a while, but I don't think you need to ask her any more questions. Let this go. If you want to ask questions, ask your husband. This all happened before you and him got together. And uh, this is a chance you take. You know how it goes when you meet someone online and you marry them quickly. Uh, you, you don't get to know the person. So please remember, everyone has a past. Steve. Well, uh, this is going to be a good one for me because I can answer all these questions you have, all of them, with rather a certainty and assurance. You met your husband online. We dated briefly before we got married. Well, there it is. There it is. You dated briefly before you got married. Now, I don't know how you all, how old you all are. You haven't mentioned any kids, anything. But you... I have to understand, like Shirley said, everybody comes with a history. So when you date briefly, you don't get to learn the history because you haven't been put in enough situations where things can crop up. Uh, you all got along and everything. Now, his mother has always acted strangely, strangely, but he said that's just how she is, and she would come around and be sweet eventually. Well, a couple weeks after you got married, you asked your mother-in-law to meet for lunch. That was a great idea. Your mom-in-law asked if she could bring her play daughter. The hell for? Now, please don't let this boy's mama act like she don't know, because she is a grown-ass woman now. And women know. Women know what they're doing. They're very smart. Women, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't hardly ever met no stupid women until they start listening to to their heart instead of their intuition. Other than that, they are on top of the food chain when it comes to brains and smarts. Don't you don't you misunderstand that for a moment. So the boy mama know what he's doing, gonna bring the play daughter. 
And you said, yeah, because you want to meet anybody close to your husband because now you're trying to learn your husband after you've married him instead of dating him longer to learn him before you got married. So now here we go. So I was excited that lunch date with his mom. and it, But that lunch date sent your marriage into a downward spiral. The play daughter knew everything about my husband. See? Right there. Why did the mama bring her? Even more than his mom. She said they've been the best of friends but never romantically involved. Why is she talking to you? <laughs> you know why I think she's talking to you? Because she's trying to play the spoiler. She's trying to be the spoiler. It's always some, some woman getting left by the wayside at the altar. And then all of a sudden, wanna, I know more. I, me and him talk. We everything. We, they, they've been the best of friends. She said they've set up many nights crying together over bad relationships. And I've never seen my husband cry. That's because you ain't known him long enough. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, after he found out you and the mom and the plate sister was at lunch, he was, I bet his ass was somewhere crying in. All right. Hang on, Steve. We'll have part two of your response to this strawberry letter uh, at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's subject, I I just met my play sister-in-law. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject is, I just met my play sister-in-law. Well, this woman met this man online, dated briefly, and then got married. Uh, Dating briefly doesn't allow you to learn the the person's history. So now you're learning his history while you're married. You've always thought that the mama was acting sort of funny to you, so you wanted to invite her to lunch after you all got married a couple of weeks. She asked you because she bring her uh, play daughter. Okay. So then you said, yeah, because you want to meet everybody close to the family. Well, that date then sent your marriage into a downward spiral because little Miss Play daughter uh, then set up here and knew everything about your husband and molding his mama. She said they've been the best of friends but never romantically involved. She said they've set up many nights crying together over bad relationships. I have never seen my husband cry. Well, you ain't been with him long enough. But I tell you what, though, after he found out you was with his mom and his play sister, his ass was somewhere crying in. That's for damn. <laughs> I can promise you that. His ass was boo, somewhere boo, 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 in boo, boo, his okay. tongue crying. <laughs> she told us that my husband almost died after a botched liposuction, and his mom didn't even know he had the surgery. Okay. Mm. Well, did you know he had liposuction? No, she didn't know. She didn't know. Did you know it was botched? No. How do you know that he almost died? I, I'm listening to this story that this woman is weaving for you. We've Play cried sister. together. Yeah, all this is stuff you can't check on. Mm-hmm. We've cried together, set up many nights. So, okay. So if y'all been crying together all over all the bad relationships you had, pretty much why I explain why little play sister and play sister-in-law ain't got no damn body. See, I'll know this now. Know who you're talking to. Uh, she thought, the mother thought he lost weight naturally. I asked her why she didn't come to the wedding if they were so close, and she said she wasn't invited. Now, the mother-in-law jumped in and said she insisted that she come, but the play daughter said she felt like my husband was moving shady since he met me. Hmm. Well, that's a good sign. See, he didn't invite her because he didn't want her around. He didn't want the drama, right. You know, because he already know his mama and the girl close. Now, he why would he do that? And listen to me. The key to this I want your takeaway to be is he felt like she didn't want to come to the wedding and she felt like my husband was moving shady. Since it, well, the husband was trying to distance himself. That's a good thing. That's what moving shady meant. Now, if this doesn't sound like a whole side piece relationship with my husband, then what is it? But see, if it was a side piece situation, it ain't no more. Hmm. But you meeting a man that had a background, as do all men. He had a background. So now where we at? If it was a side piece, he didn't tell you about it. Because who do that? 
What man meets a woman and go, hey, let me tell you about these chicks I got out here on this guy? <laughs> Who do that? <laughs> Ain't nobody finna do that. <laughs> and I don't know what you think a man supposed to do that for, but you, you can lose them expectations. You can take that off the plate because we not finna do that. And then my husband swears he's never been intimate with his play sister, but couldn't explain to me why he never introduced me to her and none of his friends know of her. Okay. Mm. So, okay. <laughs> you the play sister over there when we by ourselves. You ain't coming up around my friend because you ain't got, I ain't got no future with you. That could be it. But now you trying to make something out of his past and turn it into his right now. And there are no signs of him messing with this girl right now. So even if she was a side piece, please lose your desire for him to tell you that he had a side piece. Because he didn't had a side piece. And, it, and it's been several. It ain't just her. So if I ask this play sister more questions, will I look secure? Why would you ask her anything? Mm -hmm. This yeah. girl ain't nothing in here but to play spoil. And she's going to tell you all kinds of stuff. Because she's been crying with your husband over bad relationships. <laughs> which means she can't get in a good relationship. Now, another relationship, he done found you. And he done picked you over her. Why would you ask her anything? Because she ain't got but one mission right now. It's to try to make you think she got more of a relationship with him than you do. And she don't. Should I keep my head high as a wifey or should I do more research on her? Stop researching her. Stop digging up in this man's past. Because you're going to find something you don't want to know now. Mm. But now suppose he dug up your past. Ooh. You don't think he'd find a couple things too that look a little shady? Get out the man's past. Build your future with this man. Stop looking in the rearview mirror. You are the wife, not her. Hold your head high. You the wife. Have a talk with him and say, hey, look, lose her number, lose her information. I ain't going to beat you up about this, but make sure that that heifer stay gone. If I see her again, you won't see me again. You make your choice. That's all to it. But I ain't finna deal with her and your mama. You uh -huh. don't have no damn play sister-in-law. Quit calling her that. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't say we cried together like the OJs. <laughs> I want to, but I try to show more versatility. Yeah. <laughs> you are a very talented man. Yes, you are. All right, leave us your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at, on Instagram at Steve Harvey FM and check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up next, it is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Okay, Shirley. Well, let's just go ahead and get it out of recap. NBA playoffs this week. Unc, I know it's tough on you, man. I know. Knicks knock out the uh. Cavaliers, man. 106 to 95 the other night, man. They out. I know it's tough, Unc, man. I know. Stephen, you know? they already texted me. He said the Cavs was almost as bad as the Smiths was on Celebrity Family Feud. <laughs> I texted him back and said, no, the Cavs was worse. Another Aww. Cleveland tragedy. <laughs> so man. close. So Aww. close. Sad, so yet so far. Well, uh, well, look at this, man. They ain't the only ones, man. Because let's talk about this, man. These, these Heat, man, knock the Bucks out. They gone. The Greek is gone. The Greek is gone, man. Jimmy, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy who? Jimmy Blankety Blank Butler. Put up 42, man. Now he come back with 56 Jimmy point game. 42. 42. Man, it was 128 to 126 in overtime. Jimmy, but getting buckets. And the Greek Freak did a press conference. He said, you know what, man? It's steps to success. So he said he's coming back next season. He's going to have to because y'all ass is out right now. <laughs> <laughs> also, man, you know, who they ain't going away. Uh, the, the Kings and the Warriors, man. Let me tell you something. The Warriors is not going away, man. They knocked off the Kings 123 to 116. The Warriors take oh, a 3 they beat the, lead. Oh, they beat the Kings again? Yeah, they take a 3-2 oh, so lead. Bye-bye, Kings. <laughs> they take a 3-2 lead, man. You are you know, not going to catch them light-skinned boys. <laughs> y'all suck. When they play tonight? Flash them. Uh, yeah, yeah, they play tonight. Uh, I mean, uh, Tommy, yeah, they play tonight. Yeah, they, the Kings and the Warriors play uh, uh, game six tonight. Also, Unc, you know Phoenix sent the Clippers home. 
Yeah. They're going to take on Denver. You know, I mean, no Kawhi Leonard, no Paul George. Yeah, they can't win with them on the on the on the. Westbrook yeah. was out there swinging. He was fighting. He was swinging on people. He was rebounding. The swing come behind his rebound. He better get out yeah. the way. <laughs> he not playing. Old school hoop. <laughs> yeah, he not playing, man. So also tonight, man. Like I said, we got the Kings and the Warriors, and then we got the Grizzlies and the Lakers, man. Can the Lakers close it out tonight? Hey, the Grizzlies. That boy Ja Morant is a special talent, but yeah. this light skinned boy Dylan Brooks that wear his hair plaited. You need yeah. to sit your young ass down and learn yourself something. Because LeBron been handing it to your ass. You, you should have you had more respect about that. Talking about this man, oh, he did he get 20 rebounds the next night. I saw him blow by your ass like you was me standing on the court. So I think the light-skinned people need to be very careful, especially when you wear pigtails. All right, you, you can't plait your hair and talk trash, Dylan Brooks. Thank you, Junior. And stop Coming wearing up. white frame glass. You don't look like a killer in white sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron, right. grown man. Now, watch your mouth. Thank you, Junior, for sports talk. Coming up at the top of the hour, is the modern generation more rude and disrespectful? We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here's a question. I think we touched on this earlier this week, but um, the question is, uh, is the modern generation more rude and disrespectful, you think, or is it the same as it's always been? What's your take on that? It's we so weren't this rude. We weren't no. rude at all. Mm-hmm. My era. Not this disrespectful I, well, ever. I was we, respectful at all times to adults. Especially to elderly, to, to people who yeah. were my elder. Yeah. I cut yeah. somebody my age out. My friend yeah. next door? Oh, yeah, I'm cussing him out. <laughs> Your peer. But, yeah. but to, yeah. old, to elders, people's parents, grandmother? Oh, no, that could. was unheard of, man. Yeah, you couldn't. Like, these, if your parents found out that was it, you're dead. These kids <laughs> now are mm-hmm. robbing old people. Mm-hmm. These kids mm-hmm. now, they're, they're violating old people. Mm-hmm. I mean, they beating them up on elevators mm-hmm. and stores and walking in their house and, 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 just, no and just criminalizing the elderly. That's that was unheard of back in the day. Matter of fact, man, if you did something to old people and we found out about it, we handled it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, dog, you not you can't do that, dog. You know what? You're right, Steve. My husband said growing up in New Orleans, you know, if they was out on the street, you know, just being boys or whatever. If an elderly person walked by, they'd be like, chill, chill. Chill, yeah. chill. Yeah. Here come Mr. and Mrs. So they such and such. Through. Chill out, chill out, chill out, dog. Respect. How you doing, hey. ma'am? You know, it was a respect thing. I'm watching, I'm watching 48 hours the other night. Mm-hmm. 98-year-old war veteran who had served the country. 98-year-old war veteran raised these boys in this neighborhood to do the right thing. One of the kids really loved him and knew him and stayed next door. Three of the boys said, hey, man, we need some money. Let's rob the old guy. He went to the corner store. He was still driving the car. He got wow. in the car. The dude that knew him went up to him to say, hey, Mr. Jackson. And But then the other dude came up with a gun. And the young dude tried to stop him and say, hey, man, no, we ain't finna do that. That's Mr. Jackson. You know, he'll give us some money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The dude shot the man twice. Oh, wow. Jesus. The oh, old man yeah. pulls off, makes it to his house down the street, drives up on the curb, dies in the car. Well, he didn't wow. die in the car. They came and got him, but he died two days later in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Now, they finally catch the four guys because somebody saw him. The little dude that knew him has tried to stop it. He just broke down crying. He said, I ain't intend for this to happen to Mr. Jackson. When he pulled the gun out, he tried to stop the dude, but he was there. But he stopped him to rob Mr. Jackson. He was going to ask him for money. Mm-hmm. And they said they were just going to take whatever money he had in the car. Mm-hmm. Dude came up with the gun and shot the man. Wow. See, yeah, now back yeah. in the day, mm-hmm. they would have never got off that block. No. No. Because, no. dog, mean, we... you shot who, man? Oh, yeah, no, man. Yeah. No. no. Hold up, dog. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, if you this were... generation is just yeah. beyond disrespectful. It is an ugly world we live in now mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of lack of respect and consideration. Yeah. And old people, man, have earned the right to live their life freely 
and in right. peace. That's and right. like Tommy said, when we was going down the street being boys, if an old person walked, hold up, chill, man. Here, here come. Yeah. My husband said we that. We had yep. to get right. up. up. If, yeah. if they came, if an old person right. came and needed a seat, we would have to get up and give the older person bus, our seat. Bus all stop, of that. church, yes, anywhere. All of that. Yes, yep. you could yeah, stand yeah. up. You're young. Let this really? older person. Me and have my a mom seat. was on a bus going downtown one time. Mm -hmm. I used to love go downtown. My mom. This old lady got on the bus. I stood right up. She sat yes. down in that seat. She said, "You, you raising that boy?" Mm -hmm. She yeah. said, "Well, his daddy." <laughs> his, his, his daddy got him like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She said, I got two two boys yeah. just like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, wow. it, it's it's definitely different these days. And how blessed you were, you know, to, to have a father in the house to, to do that for you, Steve, you know. But why is it like that? Where is the disconnect between parenting these days the way we were parented? I don't I, I, I don't understand. The way they're we not being raised, parents. I, they got parents. kids, but they're not being parents. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, there you Pretty go, different. Tommy. Yeah. yeah. True that. All right. Yep. All right, uh, thanks, guys. Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so this is an interesting story. Um, despite this surgery reportedly having a grueling recovery period, men have been flocking to surgeons to lengthen their legs. Okay. I read. According wait, to wait, 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 wait. You can get legs done? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Listen to Tommy, the story. They've been doing Listen. it in Thailand for a long time. Mm -hmm. I was going to tell you about it. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Why are you I'm holding out, Uncle Steve? <laughs> well, I can All get right. to Thailand. Come on. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> So listen, according to the New York Post, a 41-year-old Minnesota man spent $75,000 to increase his five and a half foot frame by three inches, okay? Five, five to what? <laughs> but three inches, so five, eight. Don't act like you ain't been there. <laughs> But he did it so he could get more dates. Uh, and after his first successful surgery, he spent another $98,000 to get his height up to 5'10". Okay? Ooh, he's tall. Tommy, you yes. got money, boy. <laughs> you going to mess around and be a... Boy, you going to mess around and be a six-footer. <laughs> the, the, the limb lengthening procedure is accomplished by inserting a magnetic lengthening rod and pins into the thigh bones. So there you that go. Painful. Mm, gotta... I ain't finna do that. I don't need to. You ain't getting in my thigh. I can't get in my thigh. I'm 6'2. You're too old for this, Tommy. Let that I'm go. too old. <laughs> we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after. We'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather introduce your wife to your new female friend or would you rather shave your facial hair? That's all the hair I got left. <laughs> well, okay, I got so no female friends. So I don't know who I'm going to introduce. Y'all want to come over and meet her again? <laughs> Again. We know her. Like, we don't know her. Yes. Because <laughs> y'all, I ain't got no new female friends. We don't know no new friends. No, no, no. Hell no. 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 Well, I'm already B, so don't matter. You know, I'm already there. You know, facial hair, I don't keep none, so I'm already be. I ain't got to tell Wait a minute, Junior, you don't have facial hair. No, nah, I don't. No, nah, I don't have none, so I ain't got to tell her about no new friends. Well, I ain't got none. No, we're going to take them eyebrows. <laughs> And, That's and on the face and it is you here. <laughs> Have you over there looking like an emoji? <laughs> <laughs> would you rather wear undies filled with whipped cream or would you rather wear wet sneakers? Mm. Oh, I done wore whipped cream before. You ain't never left somebody house with whipped cream okay. all in you? All right, all right. <laughs> what? Uh, no. <laughs> well, y'all had a question. boring life before y'all yeah. got married. Y'all had a, a bunch boring. of losers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm going to go home and put them wet-ass tennis yeah. shoes on. Get sneakers on. <laughs> you don't want to be like your nephew with the whipped cream in your no, underwear? No, you know, one time, man, I had got, uh, oh, oh, I had Lord. got this, like, oh, I had uh, a athlete's foot. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. I messed around and was messing with my feet, and I put it on my crotch. Uh-oh. And next thing you know, I had an irritation down there. So uh -huh. to fix it, my mama told me uh -huh. to put cornstarch on it. 
Oh, and yeah. so I had put cornstarch all inside my underwear. Old school remedy. Mm-hmm. Well, what? I went over to this girl's house and pulled my pants oh, down and oh. forgot I had that cornstarch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I pulled my drawers down and that cornstarch had beaded up on me. It looked like cottage cheese. <laughs> I looked down there, she screamed, I screamed. She went, ah! I looked down there, ah! we just in there hollering. Ignorant. <laughs> I tried wow. to go in the bathroom and wash it all off and explain it. He was looking at me like... just as crazy. Oh, that, that didn't go good, boy. Oh, man. Boy, it looked, it, cause it looked like I was standing up there with a yeast infection. <laughs> and I just could not explain oh. that. Yeah. Okay, we're moving on. You are I'm crazy. Just you. Uh, I'm just telling you. Uh, I'm just telling you. The visual, the visual. I'm telling you right now, boy. Get them yeah. wet tennis shoes. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Would you rather have a perfect body but an ugly face, or would you rather be handsome with a big gut? I'm going to take that gut. Mm. Hell, I got the gut now. Hell, I'm good. Well, you is And you ain't handsome, sir. So. <laughs> I'm boy. handsome. Yeah, you be oh, all day. Me. You know what? This, this, this is for you, y'all two ugly asses. That's this, this for, for y'all. That this, this, that question ain't even for me. Go ahead. You pretty. You a pretty <laughs> boy. Tell them. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to tell them. <laughs> all right. That's today's round of Would You Rather. Uh, coming up next, it is our last break of the day of the week on this Friday. And uh, we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we are, the last break of the day on this last day of the week for us this Friday. Um, leave us with some closing remarks, you know, Steve. Um, I think that um, what I want to share with you is something that prevents so many people from becoming successful. And that thing is called excuses. You know, it's 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 amazing how when we want to justify a lack of effort or we want to justify our procrastination or we want to justify not doing something we said we were going to do. We want to justify just not getting started. We can come up with some pretty pretty impressive excuses. But you know the thing about an excuse, though? It serves no one except the person that's providing the excuse. The person you're giving the excuse to, it does nothing from them. Because their level of expectation for you was in place. And the fact that you didn't come through, I mean, how can you possibly think that this person is sitting there going, wow, that's great. You didn't come through. Now you hear, oh, okay, well, I'm sorry that happened. When, so when will you get to it? Or you hear something like, oh, wow, man, I didn't know that. And when you walk a guy, and, and when you walk away, that person goes, wow, I can't count on it. Or if you keep giving excuses, then after a while, a person just goes, I don't believe nothing he says. And either way, man, the person that you gave the excuse to, I can promise you, they don't think as much of you as they did when they first thought you were coming through. Folks, if you could learn to eliminate excuses, you know who taught me not to have excuses? My father. My father's a strong man, man. This dude was powerful to me. He was the greatest dude I ever knew. But he taught me about excuses. He said, son, don't ever give me an excuse because what that ain't going to do me no good. He said, we ain't got nothing. At least you could give me your word. He said, we ain't got nothing else. We ain't got too much more than a pot to piss in. But if you gonna give me your word and tell me you gonna do something, don't give me no excuse instead. Cause now we ain't got nothing. Y'all, if you could eliminate excuses, if you could stop the, 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 the allowing yourself off the hook, because that's all it is. The only person you're hurting with these excuses is you. I'll give you an, an example of how you hurt other people with your excuses. Though, If you have a child and you keep promising your child that you're going to do something. 
if you're a dad and you don't live with your child, your boy, your girl, and you tell them you're going to come by, that child is at the window and at the door waiting. They got their little bag packed. They got their lunch packs. I'm going with my daddy. And man, oh man, oh man, the disappointment that had that child had when you went. And then you call in and guess what you say? I had to work. Sorry, man, but I had to work. Well, I got you had to work, but guess what? It does nothing for that child that was waiting on their dad. Yeah, I got you got to work, but what they got to do, that don't stop the disappointment in the child. See, excuses, man, they, they go a long way, man. They, they, they do far more damage than you can imagine. So after a while, if you keep doing that to that child, and you keep promising your child you're going to do something, you never do it, ah, think about that, man. What that does to that child. If you're in a relationship and you keep promising the person you're in a relationship with that you're going to do something for them and you never do it, how long do you think this relationship going to last? You got to do what you say you're going to do. You can't create excuses. But then the person who really gets damaged is you because when that child grows up and he can now stand on his own and he can take his own self somewhere and he can buy his own clothes. And now you want to come around and, hey, that's my son. And then he's old enough to ask you questions. Yeah, I'm your son, but where were you when I needed you, man? Where were you when I was standing in the window? Where were you when I was sitting on the porch, man, with my lunchbox, just looking at every car that went by, hoping that my daddy would finally come through to my mama finally tell me coming there off the porch? You see, man, now you got to deal with that. And all them excuses you was giving that boy or that little girl back then, it don't mean damn thing to them. You know, man, and it stops you so much. See, once you become a person that provides excuses, it ain't just to your children. It ain't just to your loved one, your lover. It's to your job. It's to your career. And pretty soon you start giving excuses to yourself because it's a pattern of behavior. And you've got to break that pattern of behavior because it's a no-win situation for you. Stop making excuses, man. Why don't you just simply do what you say you're going to do? It's much easier to do that. If you say you're going to do it, be a man of your word, a woman of your word, and go do it. Period. Now, if you're not going to do it, say that. Be a man of your word on that. See, that's what I do. When somebody asks me to do something, I distinctly tell them, Hey, man, I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry, but I won't be there. That way, ain't no hope of you looking for me. Well, he said he wasn't coming, but I'm going to see if he come anyway. No, no, no. If I tell you I'm not coming, you pretty much bank I ain't coming. But if I tell you I'm coming, you can look for me. And chances are, I'll be there. It would take a lot for me not to do what I say I'm going to do, because I just ain't made that way. I don't like excuses. You can't get to where you're going with a bunch of excuses. All right? For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 